So let's all welcome Jamet, who's going to talk to us about Stroke Suit Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, a um, few things before we start. Uh, firstly, thanks to the boss for having us here today. Um, it's really cool to be able to show off uh, what we're doing with the game, so thanks to them for this evening. Um, secondly, um, it's supposed to be our studio head, James, doing this talk. Um, he's had a, a last minute family thing come up which he has to attend, um, so I am his replacement, so I'm like a substitute. So apologies for how um, scatty and erratic I'm probably going to be, because I haven't done a PowerPoint presentation since uni, which was a lifetime ago in my head. Um, but yeah, you, you know, I had to kind of edit the start there, which is quite embarrassing. But um, you're going to we'll, be amazing. Yeah, it'll be all right. We'll we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, cool. So I guess yeah, best thing to do is get stuck in. I don't know how to work Max either, which doesn't help. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, Strike Suit first. Um, the game is already out. We launched in January of this year. Um, PC, um, Mac and Linux as well. Um, so that's the first game from Born Ready Games. Um, we're about 15 man strong studio from Guildford, which if anybody knows the area is a real hotbed of game developers. Um, there's like, we're literally next door to Hello Games who do Joe Danger, which is cool. And there's, there's, there's crap loads of developers there. So if you, if you go out at lunch, you've got to be really careful about what you say, which is quite funny. You know, not that we, not that we say anything dodgy about each other, but you know, you just have to be a bit careful, which is quite funny. Oh yeah, so the game's out now, and the, crucially the Oculus version of the game is out now, so if you have download it and you have an Oculus Rift, you can, you can play the whole game from start to finish with your Rift, which is, which is pretty cool. I don't know if there are too many games out there that have that function at the moment, which is, which is awesome. Um, so that's that. Um, so about the game itself, we're a classic space combat dogfighter. Um, you know, harkening back to the Wing Commander, Freelancer, Free Space, X-Wing vs TIE Fighter, you know, all, all those kind of, the, the heyday of space combat, basically. Um, in order to bring it up to date for a, a new generation of, of gamers, perhaps, we've added a, a mech twist to the heart of the game. So the touch of a button, you can transform from a classic, you know, space fighter to a mech, um, which really changes up the core dogfighting experience. So there's a problem with the, well, not a problem, but um, perhaps an archaic design quality, which we call jousting. Um, which is where you end up just flying back and forth past the enemy. Um, and it's a bit laborious, perhaps. So with the strike suit, you can turn around 180 degrees and take out the enemy really quickly. So, you know, it's, it's not just a gimmick and it's not just a, oh, hi, hey, look, we've got badass mechs in our game, which is also very cool. Um, but, you know, it, it was a very much a design thing and it, we wanted to change up the core dogfighting experience. So that's why the mech is in there. Um, incidentally, the mech is designed by a Japanese mecha designer called Junji Okobu who's worked on uh, games like Steel Battalion, Infinite Space, Appleseed, if you're into your kind of, you know, your mecha anime. So he's quite a big deal, and for us, you know, it's a really a great thing to have him on board. And he's a great guy, and, you know, just chatting with him about his designs is, is really awesome. He has a very um, functional approach to mecha design. So he, he doesn't kind of, he, he's, his first and foremost thoughts are about the function and how this is going to work as a piece of machinery. So if you look at some of his other designs, he's very much about you know, thinking about what their purpose is, as opposed to, you know, this is going to look really badass and as a, a humanoid type thing. Um, so he's got a very, it's actually a very Western approach. He's a Japanese designer, but his approach is very Western, which is, which is quite cool. Um, so in combination with Junji, we've also got Paul Ruske, who, if any of you played Homeworld, will know did the so soundtrack to Homeworld, which many people regard as, you know, one of the best sci-fi soundtracks to a game perhaps ever, he's, you know, he's put up there on a pedestal, so for us to have him, you know, we're, we're a small studio, and for us to have him on board scoring our game is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, one of the, the core philosophies of the Heart of Strikes is this, this uh, combination of East meets West, so we've got mechanical design from Junji, we've got a soundtrack from Paul Ruske, he's Canadian, we're British, um, and, you know, across all facets of design, there's very much this notion of East meets West, and this blending of culture, which um, I think is one of, the, one of the, you know, the coolest things to talk about with, with regards to the game. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Strike in a nutshell, um, but let's move on. Um, so here today to talk about, you know, obviously VR. Um, I first tried um, Oculus at PAX in 2012 uh, with Doom 3. This was the studio's kind of first, um, you know, uh, experience with the kit, and it, it, it really was, for me, mind-blowing. It's put me on this path to, you know, really... Uh, I, I just love VR and I think that it's definitely something that's going to be, uh, as you know, the, the point of this presentation I'm saying is it's the real next generation of games and for me I've been on this path to just to shout and make noise about it as much as possible. So that first experience with Doom 3 was for me incredible, you know, to, to have a game that you can react to and I, I, I sat there playing it and 
I jumped because there's this demon thing jumps out at me and I jumped. And to have, to have the game react to that, you know, me being a pansy was incredible. Um, so I think that's incredible. And obviously horror, we, we spoke about today as well. Horror is something that is going to go hand in hand with Oculus and VR. And Doom 3 was a great fit for that. So that was my first experience. And I, I went back to the studio and I said, guys, we need to get on this. It's going to be big. And I think we have a game that fits Oculus and VR very well. So that was the start. That was the birth point of our idea to get on board with, with VR. Um, so yeah, we got on the phone with Oculus. We, we had um, a couple of guys there we knew. Um, and we said, hello, um, we've got this game Strike Suit um, and we'd love to make Oculus compatible. Um, and they were all for that and they sent us some kits. Um, so skip ahead a couple of months. Um, we'll talk about that in a sec. So we had our kits arrive, I think it was March. We're trying to work this out today. I think it was March. But um, it could be a, a month or two either side of that. Um, so when the kits arrived, everybody in the studio crowded around. We, we got all the demos that were out there. Um, we gave them a good, you know, messed about a load. And obviously we had some initial concerns with the whole nausea thing. And we had um, a couple of guys in the studio pretty much had to take the rest of the afternoon off because they were so out of sorts. Um, well, our, our CCO had to take this long walk like around Guildford to clear his head. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, but, you know, so we, we started to, to, to get grips with the kit and just to see what it was all about. And, our first day with it in the studio was great, it was a really good fun. Um, so we then set our, our guys working on it. We managed to get it compatible with the Rift after one day's worth of development. Now I say compatible because it wasn't really functional. It worked and you could move ahead and it worked, but there was a lot of, a lot of problems, which I'll hopefully address in a second. Um, so that was kind of our, our initial first experience to getting it working. That was our, our journey there. Um, so, I wanted to talk a little bit about space and why Strike Suit is such a good fit for virtual reality. So it's space, um, there's a lot of large environments, you have all degrees of motion, you can move in all, you know, up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards. Um, and it also panders to that notion that, you know, all little boys have, and probably a lot of little girls have as well, which is to be an astronaut. Um, so we really wanted to play into that, and uh, I think, you know, space is quite a cool thing for gamers and you know a lot of space combat games out there and we wanted to tap into that and be one of the at the forefront of that with virtual reality. So that was the first point. Um, secondly, Strikes as a game we have a lot of really big fleet wide um, battles. So there's a lot of huge capital ships, there's a lot of you know these big structures and dogfighting all over the place. It's not just you as well. We really wanted to make the player feel like they were part of something a lot bigger than themselves. So there's this notion of just, you know, space war. You, it's not just you, it's the, you know, you're part of a thing that's much bigger than yourself. You're a cog in the machine. And that plays into, you know, virtual reality very well as well. When you're looking around the, the game environment, there's a lot going on everywhere. It's a bit, it's quite, you know, it's quite overwhelming at first. But once you get into the right mindset of the game, I think it, it offers an experience quite unlike anything that's out there at the moment, which is quite cool. Um, so w earlier we were speaking about what, induces motion sickness um, and we found that having the cockpit as that, that point of reference is, is really handy. Um, obviously you've, it's, it's always there and it makes sure that it, we've had very few people feel sick with strike suit which is, which is really interesting. Um, one of the key things that plays into that is also the acceleration. The fact that you're in an accelerating craft really helps negate that sense of motion sickness. So, you know, at shows I've had maybe two in 50 people that have felt any kind of sickness, which is really interesting. Um, especially when you're considering everybody in our studio was pretty much killed by it day one. So for them to be able to play their own game and not feel like that was, was pretty cool. Um, so that's that. Was that the main thing then, having a fixed object? It, I think it was a combination of, yeah, the, the frame of reference with the cockpit and also that acceleration, that, you know, you've got a, a, a set speed that, uh, and, well, obviously acceleration, you're going faster, but you know what I mean, that, that you're constantly moving forward. You don't make that forward motion yourself, you're always moving. And I think that really played into the, what helped. Um, but it's, it's so hard to tell, I mean, but we, that's what we've, we've worked out as being the, the key factor. Um, and obviously others have realised that it's a good fit as well. Um, you've probably seen the EVE uh, Valkyrie trailer, which is incredible. And I, I haven't played it myself, but I'm really keen to give that a go because it does look absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, space, good fit. Um, so we thought we should definitely make that for Oculus. So the biggest challenge initially was the, the UI. Um, there's a, if you, when you get a chance to play Strikes, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of information you need to know. Um, 
And at first it was very difficult to read and you couldn't get the necessary information from the game, which was obviously an issue. Um, so that was a thing. Um, we looked to Team Fortress 2, um, just as a, you know, we spoke to Orca, we said, I want to have a, have a look at TF2. So we did. Um, that has a very minimal UI, uh, you know, has a fixed HUD. There's not a lot going on there and, it, and it's uh, fixed to the screen. So whatever direction you're looking in, it will always be, be there, right in front of you. Which for, for TF2 is absolutely great. For us, that didn't really work so well. Um, so we tried a different approach. Um, what we did was have the, the UI and your HUD framed to the, the cockpit. So wherever you look around you, it, you'll always be drawn back to the middle, um, which is where the, the, the HUD is framed. So if you imagine this big board, like a rectangular board in front of your, your viewpoint, um, which is it's bigger than the, the space that's in front of your, you, you know, your view. So you have to look around to see all aspects of the screen. If you want to see your, what speed you're moving or how many bullets you've got, you look to one corner. Whereas if you want to know, you know what enemy you're targeting, you've got to look to another. So there's this big board and you have to constantly look around to, to get that information. Um, it's kind of like a projection, so it's like it's projected into your cockpit. Um, now we found this worked a lot better. Um, we still, it's still not perfect and we're still working on the game, obviously. Um, it's still in beta, so we're still working through these issues. Um, but we found this has worked a lot better and we can now get the, the correct information from the game, if you squint a little bit. <laughs> So that was the, the main, the big challenge. Um, what else have we got here? Yeah, so when you, if you look to the left, the board obviously moves back to the right, that's where the cockpit would be. So that was, it's kind of that opposite thing. Um, and we found that worked well. So yeah, we, we encourage the player to look around. Um, we found it shows that um, people tend to be very static and people tend to just look straight ahead because that's how they've been used to playing for, for years. So we really try and tell them, make sure you, you, know, you look around because you're going to struggle otherwise. So that's a constant thing we have to be reminding players to look about. Um, if you know a little bit about the game, so you can, trans you can transform from a, a spaceship to a mech. Now, clearly that is an issue for us in that you have to shift from a first person perspective to a third person perspective. And we didn't know quite how to handle that. Um, we could have had you just stay in first person mode, but then you wouldn't have understood you transformed and the features of the strike suit wouldn't be immediately obvious to you. So in, in strike mode, for example, you can lock onto multiple enemies at once, you're a lot faster, you can spin around really quickly, um, you're a lot more powerful, all that kind of thing. But you need to know that you're in strike mode. So we decided to keep the strike suit third person. So when you transform it, the camera shifts back and you're in a third person view. Um, whether we've got, you know, whether that's the right approach to take, we're still, we're still work, we're still thinking about. But I personally think that's the way to do it, and I think it's cool to be able to see this, you know, really well designed piece of kit. Um, you know, and it's, it's, very, it's a very aesthetically pleasing thing, and you can see all the missiles flying off and all that kind of thing. So I think we're going to stick with a third person view there. Um, but we'll see. We might play with a few ideas. Um, one of the other things we noticed quite quickly that was a there was a real disconnect when you look down. Um, we've got the game here today with a joystick. Um, when you look down, and you don't see a hand. That's a bit weird. Um, so one of the things we did pretty early on was add a pilot to the game. So we redesigned our cockpit and we added a a pilot to counter that, which uh, helped a lot, which was cool. And it, he looked pretty nice as well. So you know that was a really and it, it separated the Oculus version of the game from the the normal edition of the game. So. You know, when we're putting out screens and stuff, we can obviously show something that is unique to, unique to the Oculus version of the game, which is nice. Um, so yeah, one of the byproducts of development, this happened accidentally, was that um, during cutscenes, you can move your head around and look around as you would normally in, a, in, in gameplay. And that was a complete accident. We didn't you know, uh, plan for that, but it happened, and we thought, well, we're keeping that because it, it is brilliant. Um, so during these cutscenes where you've got, you know, captures flying over your head and there's all this cool stuff happening. You can look around, without, you know, all, all degrees of motion and, and see what's going on, which is really cool. Um, I don't know why that's under challenge, it wasn't really a challenge, but um, anyway. Um, so how does the Oculus version differ to the, you know, the standard edition of the game? Firstly, it's a lot harder, um, but it, it really brings out the simulation side of the game. So, you know, we want people to play with the joystick, we want people to play at first person in the cockpit, you, you kind of have to play with the cockpit. We don't have to, but it, it's, it really does bring out that simulation side of the game. Um, but it, it, it goes hand in hand with it being a lot harder. Um, Why is it harder? And just in terms of, um, you know, targeting, and it, you, you just have to be a lot better at the game for it to, to play at first person generally. Um, and you've got to be, be um, you've got to be able to look around you rather than relying on the UI, which is, a, which I think is a good thing. 
but normally you'd look to um, you know reticules and what your targets have snapped to. Um, now you tend to have to look around a lot more. You know, there's no there's le less pointers, which we're, st we're still working on those kind of pointers in game. But generally now you have to look around a lot more and do all the hard work yourself, which is which I think again is a good thing, but it does make it harder. Um, like I say, it's bringing out that uh, simulation side of the game. Um, another difference is the the fact you have this much better sense of speed, scale, scale and perspective. So. One of the cool things we like doing is to get uh, our players to fly under one of the big capital ships in the game. So we've got a ship called the Arcadia, which you can, you know, he's, he's in a lot of the missions. So you can fly right underneath, look up at the belly of the ship, and you get a real sense of how small you are as a, as a craft, um, which is really cool. Because a, lo a lot of the time when you're playing games, you don't really have this sense of your surroundings in the same sense. And Oculus and VR really brings out, you know, that sense of scale and, and perspective, which is really cool. So we try and make sure that everybody's looking around properly and, and seeing just how colossal some of these ships are, which is cool. Um, so this is what I was uh, just saying earlier. Um, you, you don't have to rely on the UI as much anymore. You, you do have to look around. I should have uh, made that darker at the bottom there. Um, <laughs> so it's a lot more organic. You have to do a lot of the work yourself um, and we're not relying on the UI as much. Um, that's the UI, not the hub, the actual you know, pointers in game which show you where, you, where your enemy are. Because as a game, Strike 2 doesn't have a radar anyway. We have um, pointers just in, you know, in, in your viewpoint which will alert you to where an enemy is. And that hasn't translated to the opposition game quite as well just yet, whether that's just a case of bugs that need to be fixed or, or whatever. But at the moment, it's definitely a case of you have to do a lot of the looking around yourself, which again, I'll reiterate, is what I think is good fun about it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll see when you have a go. Um, so we've taken this to quite a few shows now. We've taken it to Eurogamer, E2 in London, Geekopolis in Paris, The Gadget Show, which was just a couple of weeks back, and Multiplay, the i series, um, which I think there's one this coming weekend actually, so we're at that as well. Um, so we've had a lot of you know, players of all ages, of all demographics playing the game, and we've had a really good chance to see what people think, what people feel, which is great. Um, at Eurogamer we had queues of about three hours, which rivaled, you know, Titanfall and some of the next gen stuff, which and I don't put that down to the game at all, that's obviously Oculus. Um, not that the game's not amazing, but it, it, you know, Oculus has a fantastic pull over people as a, a new piece of technology and for us to be able to show strikes to off the back of that is fantastic. Um, so yeah, massive crowd puller. Um, you know, reactions from people who've never used VR before or younger players is incredible. Just still seeing it today, people just going, you know, taking it off and having this. They, I always laugh, it looks like they've just been bought and they've just been, they've come out into the real world again. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's some of the faces are brilliant. I need to get a camera just to take a picture of every single person that takes the rift off because some of the faces are, <laughs> are brilliant. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just seeing that, that initial reaction of a first time rifter is, is incredible, um, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I was saying this earlier, um, approximately about 2% motion sickness, which is very low. Uh, a couple of people have experienced it, um, and they're obviously wired a bit differently, which is, which is fine. But um, generally, we haven't experienced much in the way of motion sickness at all, which is interesting. And, and as, as I was saying, that's due to the, the fact we've got the cockpit and the um, fixed speeds and all that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I've spoken about that already. So here's a dude. Uh, Geekopolis having a go. I should have put more pictures in this room. Um, so the next steps for us, the studio, we're waiting for our HD kit, which we've been told we should be getting in the next week or two. Um, I cannot wait for that. That's going to be awesome. Um, then we can really fix up that those hard and UI problems and make sure that it's you know really crisp and clear and we can get that information from the game. Um, so that'll be one of the first things we do. Um, so we've got some new tech and tools that are in the works. Uh, I should say at the start, Strikes is built from the ground up from our own engine. Um, so we want to get the Oculus testing out with some new stuff we're working on. Um, we're in between projects at the moment, Strikes is out, we're obviously working on the Oculus version. We've got um, a new game in the works which I can't talk about today but we want to be able to see how we can integrate Oculus <coughs> with that um, which should be interesting. Um, but we're, we're going to push for it. We're, you know, we're really into it, and we want to make sure that we can um, get that working with it. So we're going to be thinking about that. Um, the next part of this presentation is more just a, a kind of a general outlook on 
um, where VR is heading and just kind of my personal thoughts and um, feelings on VR as a, as a medium and as a, as a part of the industry. Um, I've been banging this drum for quite a while that Oculus and virtual, but not just Oculus, you know, virtual reality as a whole is going to be the real next generation of games. And I don't mean to play down, you know, the, the new consoles, they're, they're great pieces of kit, but essentially they're bells and whistles to existing game experiences. Whereas virtual reality is offering something completely different, um, it's where I think the most innovations and uh, you know the, where the most profound experiences are going to be. So, I you know I'm pretty sure that that, that is the, the real next generation of games, and I'll, I'm pretty true to that, and I'll keep banging that drum. What have I done there? Okay, so crucially, I think games are just the beginning for this. Um, one of the things that struck me first of all is how it could be used in a in an education sense. Um, my mum works in a school and I've, I've actually lined up to take an Oculus there so just to show them the game first of all but I wanted to talk to the teachers to see about how they would be interested in, in the kit as well um, in terms of you know, educational uses um, and for me I, I, when I was at school I really struggled with history and I didn't really get on with it and found it incredibly dull but since learning about Oculus and the, kind of the, the VR thing I was imagining you know like imagine you've got uh, tomb Carmine's tomb and you put on the headset and you're there and you're in Egypt and you're looking around this tomb and you're discovering it first hand and you know you're not learning about this from a book or a teacher telling you you're actually there experiencing it and I think you know you'd, you'd learn so much more from that kind of thing I could tell you so much about the games I love because I, I'm into it I'm experiencing it I'm actively you know there so I think that for schools it's going to be pretty pretty invaluable and I can honestly see you know you, you turn up a class and there's an Oculus on your desk or whatever it is at the time and it will be a thing, I'm pretty sure of it. Anyway, that's one thing, virtual tours, so you know, Landmark, Stonehenge, uh, Times Square, whatever, you can, you can if, you, if you can't get there for whatever reason, or, or you can't afford to, you know, virtual tours of areas will be flipping awesome. Gigs, um, film as another thing, so I encourage you all, if you have a riff, to check out the virtual cinema, which we checked out in the office last week, and it, it sounds pretty dull on paper, but um, it's one of the most interesting experiences I've had with the Rift since we got it, actually. Essentially, you're just sat uh, in, in a cinema watching a film. Um, we, we watched a trailer for Iron Man, and it doesn't, you know, that doesn't sound particularly interesting, but it, you can choose which seat you're in, and it has all the, the lighting, so the lighting from the screen will reflect on the floor in front of you. So it, it, it was one of the most lifelike experiences I've had, one of the most I could actually be here experiences I've had with a, you know, a. a a prototype um, game, well, it's not really a game, but, you know, just a thing from Oculus. Um, and that kind of got me thinking about how developers could be using this. You, so VR film could be a thing in the future, so you could go and watch a, a film specifically designed for virtual reality, where let's say, for example, it's a new Jurassic Park film or whatever, you could have a, suddenly a Velociraptor comes through the flipping front door, up the aisle and starts eating some dude who sat in the front aisle or whatever. You could have actual experiences in the the real world of the cinema but in the in the rift so i think we'll, we'll start seeing these these virtual these vr films that will start bringing in real world elements into the, the way the the place that you're viewing it which i think is going to be really interesting um so i'm looking forward to see how that um evolves um so that is a, a shot there from i think that's one of the earlier shots from it it looks different now it's got like a red one of the you know traditional red carpet and the lights down the aisle and all that kind of thing. Um, so definitely, if you've got a riff, definitely check that out. It's really, really interesting. Um, so VR is going to iterate very quickly. Um, I've, I've found there was an article last week called Avagant, which I don't know if any of you saw, but um, this piece of kit, it doesn't have a screen as such. It projects the game image straight <laughs> onto your retinas, which is absolutely mental. Um, but very cool, and that this is tech that you know is in is in development now and, and like works. Um, so that's something that is happening. Um, which so it has a better resolution. Um, it actually mimics the way we see all the real world. Um, so I don't, I don't quite understand this. I'm not too techy, but um, you know the images are generated with reflected light as opposed to emitted light, um, which it makes it feel more lifelike apparently, which is cool. So we, you, if you get rid of the screen, that you can have these kind of these benefits. Um, that's a picture of it. Um, so I'm sure Oculus is looking at this very, with you know, with interested eyes to see how this thing evolves. Um, so one of the other things is contact lenses. Um, I read a book a little while back by a physicist called Michio Kaku, who he separates. Um, it's called Physics of the Future, and it separates 
uh, technology into three stages, which is like near future, far future, and extreme far future. And one of the things in the near future category are uh, contact lenses, which have a certain amount of data mapped to them, and you know, so it's that whole kind of augmented reality thing. And uh, obviously, Google, you know, Google was doing all that. Google Glasses, sorry, doing all that kind of thing as well. But the fact that we could be having these rift-like experiences without a headset on um, is something that I find incredible, and that's not that far away as a piece of technology. It's already in the works, and it won't be that long. I'm hoping in our lifetime that we'll, be, you know, we'll be able to just flip a switch and suddenly we're no longer looking at I'm no longer looking at you guys here and I'm actually looking at some some game like environment and that, that's you know not that far off so that's pretty cool um, I just thought I'd put this in here as something <laughs> <laughs> at the end um, my, my dad said to me uh, it was quite a few years ago we were talking about time travel in one of those kind of like drunken father son you know what's going to happen kind of conversations and um, he was telling me that well, you know, in, the, in the future computers will be power, powerful enough that you can have uh, an experience like time travel it's not time travel but you could be in an environment that is that your senses could not tell was you know it's a whole matrix kind of thing we, but basically what, what I'm getting at here is that virtual reality is on a path that will eventually lead us to have experiences that is like time travel so we'll be able to put on well not put on anything but we'll We'll sync our, you know, our contact lenses, as I was saying on the last uh, screen, and we'll just travel to somewhere completely different. And you'll have like nano machines or whatever that will give you biological feedback based on what's happening in game, and there'll be haptic gloves or whatever. And it, th this will all feed into the, where VR is on a path heading. Um, and this is, you know, I think Oculus is the first step in in reaching this. And obviously, this is a bit ridiculous, and it's a bit of a, you know, this isn't happening anytime soon. But by the same token, we're, we're now having experience with games that are on the path to this. And for me, you know, just thinking about where things are heading, um, it's just incredible. And I'm, you know, I think we're, we're on something interesting. And I think we, <laughs> VR is definitely the next generation of, of, of games. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm kind of waffling a little bit there. But um, yeah, that's the end, really. Um, you can check out some stuff, more, more stuff about the game and us there. So yeah, thanks for listening. Um <laughs> if you have any questions, that's cool. I'm not too tech minded, you probably can tell, but uh if you have any questions I'll do my best to, to answer. Do you know have feedback, feedback on your future of VR? Sorry. Yeah, they have feedback on your future of VR. Yes. With on the two previous VR meetings we had, two trends that we've got discussed which are pretty pretty cool. Yeah. One of them is using uh Positioning of the head, not just head tracking. Yeah. We had a demo where uh, the guy actually used the um, uh, what's it called? This battery. Oh, the oh, yeah. 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 yeah, on his chest, so oh, you could tell where he was, or so hide behind stuff. And I know that some head trackers, some some new helmets are already incorporating that. I don't know if Rift is going to go in that direction. And the second point is Android. Yeah. Rift is investing very heavy on Android. And if you're thinking about the future of VR, you should stop looking into Android because Above all, it's wireless. You can have the hardware attached to you while you have the headset instead of having moved to the desk. And uh, we know that Carmack has moved to Rift partially because he's interested in Android. Mm. So those two trends, this is usually useful to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. sorry. No, 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 that's <laughs> <not sure. laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you can talk about it, but what specific Oculus-related tools did you end up feeling you had a need for, or that you created? Are you talking about tools and development? Uh, it's based on our, our own engine is the Z engine, which um, we've actually put out uh, more tools for that as well. So, um, but it's basically this, the new engine we built for Strike Suit, and also what will be the, the new game as well. So, is, is that what you meant? The tools for the well, like, was there anything, anything specifically back end you had to create that made developing for the Oculus easier? Uh, unfortunately, I just couldn't answer that. <laughs> uh, we would have loved. We, I tried to get some of the other guys here that could talk about that side of it, but um, they're all kind of knuckled down trying to trying to get the new game to a decent state. So, apologies that I'm not the best person here to be doing. Yeah. Hey man, um, do you have any plans to put Oculus support on the map? Yes, uh, next update actually. Um, yeah, Strike Suit is. is <laughs> yeah, the next update we do will make it Mac and Oculus as well, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>
you said you were waiting for some 1080 kits, were you? Mm. Do you know, are they releasing the 720 first commercially, or are they going to skip straight to the 1080, or have they not said, or...? No, they haven't said as far as they know. I don't know if Bossa can elaborate on that at all, but I, as far as I know, it's straight to, to the 1080. Okay. Have they said anything about a date yet? Do you know anything about that? What, commercially? Commercial release, yeah. Not, not that I know, no. Okay. Um, so does your studio not care about it? Because you're obviously you're resting time. You say you're between projects, so maybe you've got a little bit of yeah. extra time, but it's like the studio manager will not care about not knowing the release date in terms of obviously you're at least effectively spending money on this thing. They don't know if they're going to be able to release it commercially. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question, and uh, all I know is that we're, you know, as you know, we're all very interested in VR, and we will be making sure that the strikes is fully Oculus compatible when, when Oculus comes out. Um, we're, we're committed to it, but yeah, we are in between projects, and as a, you know, Born Ready Games at the moment is a very busy place. There's a lot going on. Um, as soon as we have time, we go back and we, you know, make fixes to the Oculus version and make yeah. it. Um, we we we've got a, you know, a lot of feedback that we work through. Um, but yeah, no, we're committed to and interested in making sure that the VR version of the game is as good as it can possibly be. So. I hope answered your question, I don't really know uh, if that answers it or not. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you.